Today we are joined by Glenn's Vodka Scottish League One Manager of the Month for March. Marvin Bartley. <laughs> Marv, thanks for coming on. Mate. My brother, mate. Cheers. This management game piece of piss me up. <laughs> Just some fucking tips me because I'm hopeless. <laughs> Honestly, man, the grey hair side. It's been it's been unbelievable, mate. I've been cutting them out every morning, man. <laughs> mate, it's mad what it does to you. Like. Yeah, it's stressful. Really stressful. Lack of sleep. Uh, constantly second guessing yourself. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard work. Is it harder than you thought it was going to be? Nah. It's not harder than I thought. Probably more stressful. You can take more home with you. And even when you win a game, like I'm constantly watching games back on a Saturday night, win or win, lose or draw. Constantly watching things, mate. So I'm always thinking, what can we do better? So it's. Well, how does uh, how does a missus take that watching games on a Saturday night? <sighs> Probably not very well. Does she watch them with <laughs> you? Nah. So she normally works in she England. She presents on the. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Down there with the sky mic, man. <laughs> She's in England on a Saturday, so it's alright. I get a couple of hours when I get home normally. And obviously she does the Scottish game on a Sunday. Yeah. So, you know, that's kind of my work time over the weekend. So you'll watch the game three o'clock Saturday and then go and watch it again Saturday I night? I'll watch it, yeah, Saturday you know, night. It's fresh, fresh in my mind. Right. So it's fresh in my mind and I always think you're always going to miss things on the side, aren't you? Because yeah. you're emotionally involved in it. So always Saturday night, watch it back. Sunday, I'll watch it back and then I'll clip the stuff Sunday for Monday's meeting. So I always said I'll be obsessed with it. Huh? What's the point yeah. in doing it if I'm going to do it? Half right. You no, know, I didn't do it half half. Exactly. So did you work? Did you work as hard when you were a coach at Livingston? Yeah, exactly. You did exactly, exact exactly, exactly the same. Mate. You mean? Exactly the same. Yeah, because obviously there I was taking the defenders. So Monday I'd have the post match meeting, and then from Monday through to Friday I'd work with you and the analyst to get Friday stuff prepared. So yeah, it'd be the same. Go home on a Saturday, watch the the Livy game. Sunday do the same thing, and then clip it up, mate. Ready for Monday morning's meeting. Anyone watching? You need to put the work in now. Slaney's not here. He said he was he was in the cover of Ellie. He was in the cover. <laughs> He's probably with her now. Oh, sorry, just got she, didn't, she didn't pick up her phone, by the way. <laughs> He'll be hunting up there. Marv's not in the house. I'm just going to go. Uh, right, so your March, your former March, three wins and a draw. Um, did you expect to go in and do so well straight away? No, you always think you can go and affect things, don't you? Um, obviously, you know, the previous manager had lost his job, so I knew some things weren't, weren't right. Um, but for me, between me going in and the end of the season, it's all about trying to implement things ready for next season. And the boys, to be fair, it's down to them, isn't it? You know, they took it all on board. They've, they've worked really, really hard. Um, and, you know, they got the kind of rewards for that with the results. So you always believe in yourself. You always think you're going to do things well. It's just kind of a time frame to do it. People always think you can go in, wave a magic wand. And after a week, if you don't win the game, people are, oh, he's not making a difference. There's yeah. no impact. But it does take time. But as I said, some pick it up quicker than others player-wise. I've asked uh, a couple of managers this, this year who have just taken over his jobs. Did you have a, a clear way that you thought you were going to go in and play? And did that change when you went and assessed the squad? I always said, genuinely, whatever team I go into, especially if it was mid-season, I would do the best thing for those players within the building. Because, you know, if I want to go in and play, say, Longbourn, I've got nobody over five foot seven, it's not going to work. You know, right. same thing if I want to play pure football and I don't have technical players, it's not going to work. So people talk about philosophies, etc. Yes, I do have my own, but I have to implement that over time. I always said I'll go in, do the best formation, the best kind of style of play to give us the best chance of winning with the squad I have. And then over time, I'll, I'll change it to you know what I see and, and, and what I want to do. How much have you mirrored kind of how Livingston do things Monday to Friday at, at Queens? Um, it's, it's very different. I've changed our day off, for example. Right. You know, and why was that? Because I've, I've always believed that you know having a Wednesday off makes no sense for me. If you're playing on a Saturday, normally Sunday you're off. Monday's a cool down if you played the Saturday. So you train once a week. It's a Tuesday. Because yeah. come the Wednesday you're off again. Thursday you're thinking about Saturday's game. So I wanted to you know get more stuff into the players. You know it's about working smart, not working ridiculously hard. Um, so Tuesday and Wednesday, the boys who have played Saturday will train so I can get more into them, more information and more time on the training pitch to kind of iron out things. So I changed that straight away. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot different to probably what we're doing at Livingston, but everyone does things their, uh, their own way, don't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah, cool. So with that in mind, how long were you thinking about how you would work a week and, and not just that, but everything? How, how many years have you kind of thinking uh, about what, how you would do things when you finally got the job? Probably since age about 24, 25. Have you met her? Yeah, this is this has always been my plan to to go into management. Didn't know when it was going to happen. Um, but Why 24, 25? What happened at that age? I had a chat probably a year or so before that of Eddie Howe, um, who got injured early on in his career. Yeah. And he always said, think about what you want to do next. And, and you're, as a young player, as you know yourself, you're like, what do you mean what I'm doing next? So I'm, I'm young, like, I've got loads of time left. And he said, your career will go by just like that. So that's if you get to the end of it, you might get an injury like me, etc. cetera. So um, ever since that age, you know, I started thinking about, right, I want to be a manager. One day I want to be a manager. So how do I give myself the best possible chance of, of doing that? And that's when I started saving coaching sessions, like handwritten, you know, scenarios I've got written down in like a black book. And, you know, I got towards the end of my career and started writing down 
how I would deal with that as a manager because I've already got it written down how I dealt with it as a player. Administration, relegation, promotion, all those sorts of things, all those sorts of emotions that come with that. So, you know, I was always prepared for kind of this next step where I am now. Wow, that's incredible. And Livingston was your first coaching job? Yeah, so I, I went into Livingston from Hibs. Obviously, I took over the reserves uh, first and foremost. Um, I was assistant to Scott Pittman's dad. I don't know if you know Pitt's senior. No, he, he, is that him that he, he was Davies? Did he play with Scott? Yeah, yeah. So, with Davey, but was that yeah, he was his dad manager? was the manager That's of Davey. Right. His dad, honestly, the What's his dad like? Sc- Crazy. Is Hon- he? Honestly, man, brilliant, brilliant guy. The loudest guy you will ever meet. And Scott Pitt- so quiet, isn't he? Because at home, he must not got to speak. That's why. His dad's <laughs> constant, mate. Honestly. What was his dad like with players? Could he go off his nut? Yeah. He would go off his nut even if you're doing well. <laughs> but yeah, he was honestly, man. So it was like good cop, bad cop. So I did that with him for, for a while. Then I took the reserve manager's job while still playing and then obviously I went into assistant manager and you know where I am now so kind of a natural progression you know through the levels but it's always something I wanted to do it's not been something I thought 31 32 what do I do next yeah and that's why I did my coaching badges um, when I was still playing and I go and do my pro license this summer is he uh, is he mad Dan Davy? yeah is he? Oh. oh, he must be a fucking lunatic. <laughs> <laughs> so Davey was easy work after. Yeah, Daisy, da- Dave, Daisy, Daisy, da- uh, Davey, yeah, Daisy, yeah, Daisy Martin, Daisy Martin. Daisy Martin. <laughs> He'll hunt yeah. you down, man. Honestly, Pitt senior man. Once you deal with him, you can deal with anyone. Have you got an example of some of the stuff he would do? I couldn't even say it on camera, mate. Really? Probably get, probably get him locked up. <laughs> That's why Pittman's so fucking tunnel vision, oh, isn't it? Straight away. Honestly, at the Livingston game, not that there's a lot of people there, but all you could hear is his dad when he comes to games just shouting. At him or just the hey. Oh, does he go? <laughs> You're thinking shit, man. I'm even scared for pits. <laughs> I'll even run a bit, man. I was like 33, 34 trying to bomb around the pitch. <laughs> so I could hear his dad shouting. Uh, incredible. Uh, when you came in, what was the remit just to keep them up? No, the, listen, there was no real remit from, from the club. Um, we were always safe. Do you know what I mean? That that was never going to be a thing. It was trying to get things moving forward. You know, I, I wasn't going to come in, as I said, and wave a magic wand, but we can try and win as many games between then and the end of the season. Yeah. Trying to play as close to the style that, that I want to play going forward. Um, so it's ba- basically putting building blocks in place uh, for the club long term, because it's in short term, you can come in and people talk about this manager bounce, which is nonsense. Um, but yeah, it was, there wasn't really a remit from a club. It was just trying to improve things, improve results. And these are things I like to find out. So kind of from hearing that you were maybe inter- they're interested in giving you the job, do you watch games back, previous games? Do you go and watch them in, in the flesh? How, how Do you go do a bit of homework before you accept the job? Um, so it was, we were playing, who were we playing for Livingston? We were away to Ross County um, and Queen's asked for permission to speak to me. On, on the Friday. So you had no idea this was no, happening? No, no, no. Went down. So does Davey just come up to you and say Queen's have asked to speak to you? I asked for permission to speak to you. Um, so w- went down, spoke to them and got offered the job. I got back in my car probably 20 minutes up the road and been offered the job. And then obviously, you know... What, was an interview or anything? No, I had an interview. So I went down there, had an interview with them and then... Was that you know, your first ever interview for a job? No, I'd spoken to a club before. and uh, You have like people trying to sign you out for things, don't they? Yeah. But it was a, it was the first time that you know, I decided that I would do it. I'd been offered a job before and, and it wasn't right for me um, in Scotland. to take. Yeah. yeah, it wasn't right for me to take. I just didn't feel, I was never going to jump into anything. You know, I'm 36 years of age. So at that time I was, I was 35. So, you know, it wasn't anything that I was going to jump into. Um, and, and this felt right for me. You know, it was a good kind of discussion that we had. And as I said, you know, 20 minutes up the road, I was offered the job. And then it's about then me. I said, listen, let me go and speak to Davey um, and, and explain what's happened. But I think he he kind of always knew this day was going to come. Um, he said that when we interviewed, interviewed him. Yeah. The manager, the manager, he said he, always seen, he, he knew it was coming. Uh, yeah, and, and I'd always been honest with him. You know, my aspirations and kind of my confidence in, in what I thought I could do as a manager and my belief, you know, I'd, I'd never hide it from anyone. I was always honest, but I was always going to always be the best assistant manager I could possibly be to, to Davey when I was there because um, he'd given me the opportunity to do that. So... Um, yeah, I had the conversation with him, you know, we decided that I'll tell the players after the game and, you know, kind of the rest is history. So see, when you, did you accept a job without having seen Queen's play or did you speak to them and then go and maybe watch a couple of games, previous games so, and then accept No, accept the job? I, it, it was Just weird. So yeah, no, it was, it was a feeling I got from them and, you know, I accepted the job probably a bit, bit backwards, isn't it? And then I, you know, I went and watched, I know, I watched every game that they played this season. Um, which was a lot Did of you? hours. you? went back and watched yeah. every game? Yeah, sat in. Fuck off. Honestly, sat in the living room there. The dog, dog down, chilling. Mrs. in the other living room and had it wired up to the TV. 
Because as I said, what's the point of me doing it? Yeah. You know, as you say, half ass. What that, that makes no sense. That that's no good for anybody, especially for me. Because now you know I'm in a position where I'm manager. I need to give myself the best opportunity. And I always said to myself, you might not succeed. You might not do. You know, things might not go the way you want them to. But at least I can look back and say I gave it absolutely everything. Yeah. You know, I'll never cut any corners with that because I just don't believe in it. Mate, how many games did they play? Honestly, that honestly mate, I had a headache. I knew, I knew absolutely everything about everyone. It I was. I love that. Yeah, but. Was there anything that you seen on the videos that you had a perception of something and then when you seen them in the flesh it was completely different? Yeah, uh, a, lot of the boy, that, a lot of the boys look slimmer on, on, the, on the video. <laughs> <laughs> but people so, laugh, but that is, a, that is a big thing, isn't it? Yeah, I saw them in real life and I was like, is that the same guy? No, nah, listen, you see a lot of things on there and, and it's good. You kind of, your emotions taken out of it because at this moment in time I'm not managing these players. So I could watch it with a clear conscience and I, and I went in and I think the boys respect it as well because, you know, you start speaking about previous games that I hadn't been there for and they're probably thinking, how do you, how do you know that? Yeah, yeah. but it, it was my duty to, to do that. Well, it's a good, great example, man. If you're going, if you're going to do the work, man, they need to do the work. Yeah, man, eh? exactly. And that, you're not that, asking them to do something that you're not fucking doing yourself. Exactly. So imagine I go in there and say, you need to do all this and I'm doing nothing myself. And, and that was kind of the, the initial kind of when I spoke to the players, the presentation yeah. um, is that, you know, no one will coast through. You yeah. know, if you want to coast through, then leave the football club. And I offered anyone within that room at that moment in time, because it was January. If you want to leave the football club, you don't want to be here, absolutely fine. You know, there's a door, get your agent to call me and we'll do what we can to, to allow you to leave the club. If you're going to be here, you're going to work hard. I always describe it as a journey, you know, and your contribution to the journey might be that you're my top goal scorer, you're my goalkeeper. It might be that you never play a game for me, but when you're around, be a good guy, be a good person. You know, always be yourself, come into there, be yourself. You know, it's always leave your ego at the door though. I'm not interested in egos. We're in here to work hard together, but I want you to be yourself. Don't come in and think you have to be somebody else, you know, and always just be a better version of yourself. Because if we're all doing that collectively, it gives us a chance. And, you know, and I introduced something as sappers and energizers, got a list of them on the wall at the training ground. And the reason for that is that I think, you know, energizers are the people that I want in and around it, you know, whether they're not playing or not, I want to act in a certain way. But then sappers, I think sometimes if, if your characteristics are like seven or eight of the 10 on there, all of a sudden I look at you, so I'm thinking, oh, I'm not sure I'm going to be I'm around you. I'm a fucking you. zapper, yeah. boy. <laughs> but you'll look on the wall and think, if, <laughs> if I hit too many of them, I need to change my ways. Do you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? And, that, and that's the thing. So I was a zapper as a player, mate. I, I thought I wasn't about 100% was when you what, think What, in and around the dressing room and uh, stuff? Like, like you're saying, you'd have been fucked. You thought being a been lively out. guy was being an energiser, but it wasn't, mate. So I was quite negative, mate, when I think back. Yeah. It was in a bad way I was doing it. Yeah. Eh? See, that's the thing, but we all learn. Yeah. We all learn, right? Some, maybe back then, if someone would have said to you, well, these are the list of things that I think sap energy from other people, you're like, that's me. Mate, then you can change it. Is, moment, exactly. Uh -huh. It is a switch. Uh, good, I like it. Uh, in terms of the interview with the chairman, because obviously, as you said, you had a great job at Livingston. Mm -hmm. That first job so important. What was it that was kind of put to you to, to, about, about Queen's that, 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 that you made you want to take the job? It was more what I put to them. Obviously, I had a lot of young players there. You know, I think I'm good on the grass and I like to develop players. And, you know, I've been in, in squads where you do have young players and I think they learn a lot quicker. Um, they're willing to follow the manager into battle if they believe in what he's doing and articulated in the right way. Um, and the chairman wanted to do that. I want to develop young players. You know, I think too many teams in Scotland try and go around the merry go round of players that have been at five, six different clubs, trying to bring them into your club and think something's going to change. Um, I want to bring young players into the football club. I want to make them better. I want to have a model that hopefully one day you can sell those players on. Because then when you've got a kind of a bit of a budget to play with, you can sign better young players yeah. and keep bringing them through. And if they're doing well, and people might say, oh, we're using the club as a stepping stone. But if they're using the club as a stepping stone and doing well and getting their next move, that means we're doing well as a football club. You know, and then all of a sudden you've got boys coming out of Celtic Rangers and rather than wanting to go to, say, a team in the championship, they might say, right, well, let's go to Queen's because I know Marvin Bartley will give me a chance. I know the coaching's good. I know you have a good environment and good facilities. And, you know, I know I'm going to have a chance to play first team football. So, like, budget and that, did that really come into it for you? Because quite a lot of managers are the first job, they want a big budget, don't they? If we all want a big budget, don't yeah. we? All, all, and I always said to the chairman, you know, if I felt that I needed something, I'll come and push for it. If, if, if I don't feel that I need it, then I, then I won't use it. Um, you know, I think it's easy as a manager to say, oh, I need a big budget, I need the biggest budget in the league to, to do well. But what about your coaching? Yeah. You know, the thing Love with me, I, I always think I can make players better, yeah. you know, regardless of your age. And that's what I said to them. You know, and I think we've, We've kind of seen that because, you know, performances have improved. And it, and it probably helped that you'd been in a similar situation with Livingston, but I think you said Davey always, I, I don't know if he's ever mentioned it to you, but <laughs> 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 they, had, they, have the, they have the smallest budget in that league. So 
you know what it entails to go and manage on a, on a smaller budget. Yeah, I've been in worse situations. I've been in, at Bournemouth when we had absolutely nothing. You know, absolutely nothing. A bunch of boys who came through non-league and we managed to win the league and go up. So I know what, how important culture and, and all those sorts of things are and having hard work because if you, if you don't work hard, you're going to get nothing from football or from life, let's be honest. Yeah. Uh, what main changes did you make straight away? Um, the day off was a, was a main change, probably. The intensity of training, um, you know, now everything's down to the minute. So if I say a session's going to be 57 minutes and it gets to the 57th minute and we've missed something that we were meant to do on the day, it doesn't matter. Training stopped. We're out there to train at a high intensity in order. And that's the best preparation for us for the game. So I might not get all the things in that I want to do because I might have to speak to you for slightly longer or explain something for slightly longer, but I, I just cut it away. So everything's down to the minute. Um, really? Man, that's yeah. you stand with the stopwatch and bang. Everything's with... down to the minute. So Mrs. got me one of these Apple watches um, as like a kind of present for, for getting the job. So obviously you have the timer on there. And as soon as that buzzes, the session's finished. Doesn't matter what's going on, the session's over. Because, you know, I plan on a Sunday when I have a cool head. And I speak to the sports scientists and what's best and distances we need to cover, et cetera, et cetera. So there's no point in being out there on a Tuesday and I'm enjoying what you guys are doing. And all of a sudden, rather than being a 57 minute session, it goes to an hour and seven, that's 10 minutes. And then that potentially eats into Saturday's game. So everything's down to the minute. Everything we do is down to the minute. This that, guy is fucking trade. on it. I love it, mate. <laughs> but that's the only way you can do Sky it. Sky obviously right? not paying as much as what I thought because <laughs> an Apple watch for the... <laughs> Well, for gold, probably get her real money in the sky, <laughs> <isn't it? laughs> uh, So, again, you spoke about Davy Livingston. Was it coming, like, no desperate, was you coming at that time that you'd been in Livingston, like you say, like two years now as assistant manager, where you were, were you really starting to get out of your feet thinking, I want to do this now? No, nah, not nah. really, because, you know, I, I knew what was meant for me would never pass me by. And, you know, I had opportunity to, to go down to England and coach as well. And I was happy with what I was doing. You know, it had to be something that fitted in with, how I saw the game. There's no point in me rushing into it. As I said, you know, it's not like I'm thinking, you know, I'm at the end of kind of my management career, go out there and get a chance. I was always willing to be patient. If it came then, if it came in three years time, I'll keep on learning and keep developing. It didn't make any difference. Um, but as I said, this felt like the right one for me and, and that's why I jumped at the chance of doing it. But I've turned uh, down uh, jobs before, as I said. See, other than uh, coaching, was there anything else development-wise? Did you ever go and watch other clubs train, managers yeah, train? Yeah, watch other teams train. Um, you know, went down to England also. You know, I like to see, it's managing people, right, football. So I went and followed a, a boxing promoter around for a while and just saw how he managed people and how he dealt with different situations. Um, did a lot of reading on people like who were in rugby and, and different sports. Because, Eddie Jones? Yeah. Incredible. Yeah, man. absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. And, book, yeah, it's honestly class. But it's so important because as I said, it's all about managing people and making people feel good about themselves because if I make you feel good about yourself and I give you the tools to be fit, and as I said, you know, we come up with a game plan, you'll go out there and execute it better than if I'm constantly shouting at you, you're unfit and you don't feel wanted or feel happy. I think too many managers make players just feel like, you know, just numbers. You know, mm. you've got a year left on your contract, he's got two years left on his contract. You know, I want to know about the person as well. And that's another thing I did when I first went in. Within the first two days, I sat down with absolutely every player and I found out about them. You know, you married, like, where do you live? Like, what's your family situation? Because I've... I moved up here away from my family and I know at times I want to go back, you know, where it's very different to the boys who are in Scotland can go and see their parents who are half an hour away, etc. So that's another thing that I did. And, and at times I give boys who live further away, you know, you, you go home, you know, if, it, if we've got a break kind of at the weekend, you go home and some of the rest of us will train. Just treat people differently, you know, but treat everyone well. Yeah. So I think, you know, as I said, if, if, if you're being treated well, then I feel happy about myself because I know you're not up here by yourself and you can never go home and see your family because and that's not a situation that anyone wants their teammates to be in. Yeah, brilliant. Uh, how did you take your first defeat as a manager? Was it, was ah, it... nah, couldn't sleep. Could not sleep. Uh, do you start to question everything that you're doing? Or does that Yeah, it, I question why. Why Why did that happen? And Because I hate people go, see, you get beat, but go, oh, it's just football. No, it's not just no, football. No, it's not just football. Reason. It's not just football. And to be fair, it wasn't the first defeat, because the first defeat was away to Montrose, and we had played on the Tuesday night against Kelty in the Cup. And then obviously at that point, the boy had, boys had the Wednesday off and we've been in Thursday and Friday and then played that game on a Saturday. The one that really affected me was the Kelty Hearts, that game, because we were in full control of it. First half, absolutely all over them, just needed a goal um, and then ended up losing the game 3-0. And that's when I questioned myself and that's why it's good to have, as I said, Marsh, the goalie coach and Granty, because I was raging, absolutely fuming and, you know, having that experienced head to around you and just saying, do you know what, just calm down. And again, I was like, no, I'm going home to watch the game, which I did. 
as I always do. But no, I was absolutely fuming. Didn't sleep. Came in Monday. I was just thinking, how's that happen? Yeah. Never going to work harder. But as I said, you know, I always plan the week on the Sunday. You have to have cool heads when you do that. Um, otherwise, the boys would have been running every single day. <laughs> <laughs> Were you angrier than you thought you would be after a defeat? Um, no, I always you take know, defeats badly. Like yeah, yeah, I always take defeats badly. I'm just, it's just the, the manner of the defeat. It was the manner of the defeat that really, you know, and there were so many things that I was seeing that could be improved and, you know, added to the reasons why we lost that game. You know, why were we as tired as a part-time team after 60 minutes when we've controlled the game? Why was this happening? Why was that happening? And to be fair to the players, at that point, I didn't get, have the information into them that I needed into them. They weren't getting any fitter than what they had been because we only trained, you know, two days. So yeah. I had to be patient with it as well. Did you go Did you go in straight after the game and go off them or do you, do you take a wee five minutes? To no, no, they got it after that game. Yeah. And, they, and they needed it. They needed it. They needed to know that I wasn't here to mess around because I'm a well-mannered guy. You know, listen, I'm nice and calm. I'm more than approachable. But see when it comes to football and you don't do something that you should do out there, especially when it comes to not working hard enough. <laughs> I won't accept it. Yeah, yeah. I won't accept it. Did you get to have that sort of pull at Livingston where Davy would allow you to, if, if you had that sort of anger after full time, would you, as an assistant, would you be one that would go through the players? If, if it was needed. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously Davy would speak first because he was the manager. Um, yeah, if it, if it was needed, then I would do it. As I said, I probably went through players more in, within the defensive meetings, you know, because that was kind of my remit within, you know, the setup of things. And I'd probably go through people more, which would probably be on a Monday. Right. Um, but on a Saturday, a couple of times, I had, you know, had some choice words for people. Because, as I said, there's no excuse for not working hard. And, you know, if we lost a goal or... You didn't have to lose a game. If we lost a goal, we something that was wrong. I wouldn't accept it. So I react the same way. If we win 5-1 and we make a mistake that, that leads to a goal, we make a mistake that we shouldn't make, I'll deal with it the same way as if we've lost 2-0 it doesn't make any yeah. difference because if I only react in that way when we lose 2-0 and it's like ah oh, sorry it's alright you know we lost 5-1 don't worry about not tracking that man back so mixed like, message yeah you, you fucking track back yeah that, that, that's the basics of it yeah brilliant uh, you said about the full, the full time against the part time would you have taken on a part time job no, no I don't think so um, and the reason I say no is I was a part time player myself and I just you know, if I wasn't at Livingston, maybe if I was out of work, then maybe. But I was in a full-time environment, yeah. one that, you know, I was enjoying and everything was absolutely fine with me. So I wasn't, as I said, I wasn't desperate. So I wouldn't have gone out to, to a part-time team, no. Like, Jake, have you watched the improvements that you really want in players and it needs to be full-time? Yeah, you need to be full-time. Obviously, you've got more time with the players, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and it's easier to make improvements, or it should be easier to make improvements. Although what some of the part-time teams pay... <laughs> means that some boys don't want to go full time full doesn't time, it yeah, that's yeah. the hard thing in League 1 yeah. and because you've got big clubs in, in, in your league as well yeah. so Queen is a, is, a, is a tough gig yeah yeah no it is but they're all going to be tough because even if you're one of the other teams you have a massive massive budget then you're expected to win things if you don't win things then all of a sudden you have, you have different pressures on you yeah. but I, I put the same pressure upon myself I expect to win every game I don't care about budgets budgets don't win games of football you know what I do out there on a the coaching pitch what I can recruit what my players can do and go and implement on a Saturday is, is what wins you leagues, what wins you games. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, as I said, there'll be a lot of hard work done this summer. And uh, how have you found League One? Obviously coming in for the Premiership, have you found the standard in League One? I've, I've enjoyed it, if I'm honest. I, I have enjoyed it. You know, good it, players, Yeah, man. exactly. Yeah. As I said, you know, I was saying to you, there's, there's a lot of players at the, at the level that aren't there because they lack ability. It's because of other things, professionalism. That was a, that was a massive thing that I found. Um, you know, the standards that I adhere to, you know, I've had to pull some people up to it and they've, they've taken it on board by the way they've done it the players have done it absolutely fantastic the ones that are in the building um, but you know every so often you have to prod them because my standards will never slip yeah. and, and nor shall theirs because if your standards are going to slip then you won't be at the football club and as I always say that's the harsh reality of football we're so privileged to do what we do but you know I'll suffer no fools I, I really won't if you're not going to put the work, hard work in you won't be at the football club Yeah. Uh, how was the meeting with Davey when you told him that you decided to take the job? First time I've probably seen him emotional. Was he? Mate, yeah, huh? yeah, I was as That's well. That's why you call him Daisy now. He'll <laughs> <laughs> never let me live that down, man. You're going to get a phone yeah, call. Yeah, like fucking Daisy. Um, <laughs> no, listen, we had a great relationship. Um, we really did. You know, me, me as obviously a player first and foremost and captain and assistant manager. And we always had that kind of thing is that sometimes Davey would shout in it the way he does and sometimes I would just bite back. And it wasn't ever in a disrespectful way, but sometimes I just disagreed with him. And I think he respected that, obviously at the right time in the right place. Um, but our relationship was brilliant. It really, really was. So, 
you know, it was it was hard. It was hard to to leave the football club. But as I said, you know, I, I owed it to myself that it's something I always wanted to do. And he was fantastic. You know, big man, you'll be you'll be brilliant at it. Yeah. Like, you know, you go with my wishes and all that sort of stuff. Did he give you any advice that you hadn't gave you as an assistant when you agreed to take the manager's job? Um, no, we've knew, all, we'd yeah. always spoken, yeah, yeah. Like, no, so not, nothing really changed, so just go, go there and give you all which you knew I would. Um, you know, all the managers that I've spoken to that i played under or, you know, come across who wish me good luck, etc. none of them have really given me anything different to, you know, what they've given me when I spoke to them before kind of thing. Um, Did they all get in touch, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot, like a lot of managers. Eddie Howe. Yeah, a lot of managers, yeah, and a lot of people and coaches that, you know, I might sit on the sidelines, you know, get messages from and just the numbers coming up and then you read it and see where it's from. So brilliant. Honestly, yeah. offers so much help. Paul Heckenbottom, like honestly, so many. Let's throw Nan down at QPR. Wow. Um, so a lot of people have been Slaney. in contact. Nah, nah, no, Slaney, right. nah right. exactly, exactly, man. Nothing from him. Exactly Nothing right, at all. He's too busy making documentaries. <laughs> <Dick>. <laughs> and uh, You've only been in the job for a short period of time, but have you had, uh, have you had to reach out to any of these people since for a bit of advice? No, not yet. I will in the summer. I will in the summer. Obviously, I know they're busy with their own jobs. Um, so no, not at this moment in time. I've not reached out for any advice. As I said, you know, people always talk about experience in management, don't they? But because I had envisioned what was going to happen and how things were going to be, I, f I think I'm kind of ready for a lot of the scenarios. Don't get me wrong. Some things have cropped up that I've been like, hang on a minute. And you just deal with it. You know, you take it in your stride. What, what are they? What are scenarios? Professional, unprofessional things, right. you know, that, that I've seen and I'm just like, in all the years I've played football, I've never seen anyone do that. And I've let the players know that it won't be accepted and this is the reason why. And I have a three strike rule, you know, and it's, you know, a couple of people have been on, on two strikes. Somebody's not on two strikes, you said, I yeah. yeah, but he's not, not the club anymore. Right. Um, so, yeah, you know, I have a three strike rule. And as I said, all these things were explained at the start. You know. Have you got fundamental? Have you got like five, four or five fundamental non negotiables? Non -neg yeah, <laughs> be punctual, um, be respectful. Use your voice because it's respected. So I don't want to sit in a meeting and, and me just to be speaking. I want to hear your opinion because you might disagree with how I see things. And I always say, just because I'm the manager doesn't mean I'm always right. So, you know, we have to talk. We have to understand these things. You might say to me, Gaffer, I want to attack in a different way or I want to defend in a different way. If, you, or if there's a reason why, always have a why. This is the reason why, I'll take it on board. And guess what? We'll come up as something as a team. Yeah. We'll come up, yeah, exactly, everyone together. But if you just say to me, oh, fuck that, I want to attack. I just want to attack and like attack how you don't have a reason why then you'll be shut down but if you have a reason why always willing to listen um so they're they're probably the three of the the, the main ones always get given 100 percent, you know yeah, and, yeah. and smile have to smile smile yeah have to smile Ended up even in, if you've got teeth like slinny yeah, by smile. the way do you know what that's what i was gonna say to you <laughs> end of the presentation i had a guy that had about three teeth <laughs> and, I, and i swear and i said do you know what i said if he can smile we can all fucking smile do you know what i mean Brilliant. so he's always smile Amazing. Uh, just on Davy, because I was obviously surprised at the setup, and you're talking about the meetings, mm -hmm. post match, pre match meetings. I was really impressed. Uh, do you think you could go and high, manage at a higher level? Yeah, I think I think every manager, you know, has ambition to go and manage a higher level. And you know, I've worked with Davy, and, and definitely, you know, I think he can go and just get an opportunity, isn't it? It's somebody giving the opportunity to do so. Um, you know, going in front of a board and, and convincing them that you're the right man to take it forward. Um, but I think every manager, you know, has aspirations to manage at the highest level. Otherwise, you're in the wrong, wrong job. Yeah. Why do you think they're just, is Lovingston are just missing it on that top six every last two years now, isn't it? I, I wish I knew because uh, then I could have fucking helped last year, couldn't I? Um, it's crazy that, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's tough. It always seems to get to a certain point and is it maybe squad the pressure. Size be, is it squad size It might now? be pressure. It might be, you know, all of a sudden you, you go under the radar and it gets to four or five games before the split and everyone's looking at each other then. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the papers saying, oh, Livingston are in the mix and you're thinking, shit, like, we've gone under the radar to this point, but hopefully they can still do it. Listen, they need a, a few favours, don't they? Yeah. Um, come this weekend, but it'd be massive if the club can get in the top six. A uh, standout manager you want to, and I know he's a big, massive influence on you, Eddie, how what yeah. a job he's done at Newcastle. But I know that doesn't surprise you. We spoke, I spoke to you before, and you think he is elite. He is elite. He is. And there's no doubt about it. And as I said, we, you know, we spoke about this before, and when he was due to come up to Scotland, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, fantastic manager. Doesn't surprise me at all. Um, you know, does the basic things extremely well. Obviously, has some fantastic players. Um, but the structure that they'll have, uh, the way I want to go about the games, and he's a fanatic. You know, he's obsessed with with football. The same way that that, that I see myself, absolutely obsessed with it. 
Um, he'd be the one that I would imagine that you would look really look towards. Yeah, and, and, and that, he's the reasons that I go home and, and watch training and clip things up and try and improve things. Always trying to evolve. You know, never ever settle for where you are. And I, I have an age in my mind where I know I'll walk away from football management no matter where I am because I'll put that much into it that I can't do this for for the rest of my life. It's impossible. I couldn't be a Roy Hodgson, for example. You know, do you know, know what I mean? Me, yeah. I would probably look more like Morgan Freeman at that age, but yeah, do you know what I mean? I couldn't. I, I, could, I couldn't do it at that age. I know that. Uh -huh. I know that because how how obsessed I am, how demanding I am on myself. You know, the, the hours that I have to put in. Um, you can't do it forever. And, and he's he's exactly the same. And you know, towards the end at Bournemouth, he started to look. You know probably like a 20 year old rather than a 15 year old you know yeah. that's a bit older, didn't he and you know he looked refreshed again you know when he came into the Newcastle job and, and everyone needs a break in this game but he is the one that I, him and Paul Heckenbottom the, uh, well Scotty Allen was on the podcast Monday and was raving about Paul Heckenbottom brilliant absolutely as a coach brilliant. Or, fantastic around. coach you know out on the grass you know as I said a real simple message the way he wants the game played um no surprise he's second in the league in the championship with Sheffield yeah. United because again he articulates himself extremely well um, he's demanding of his players, he's respectful of his players as well, but there's no grey areas, you know, there's no grey areas of what he wants to do and how he wants to go about his, you know, day to day and obviously on, on the weekends and I'm kind of the same, I have the kind of fit in or fuck off, that, that's how I am, if you, don't, yeah. if you don't want to fit into the hard work, if you don't want to do those, you know, non-negotiables, then, you know, this is not the right football club for you, yeah, exactly. As Eddie went big time in Patricia since he's no, the Champions no, League no, spots. No, never. I know where he lives. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you spoken to him since you've taken the job? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have. And do you think he'll come up to it again? I know he's obviously busy just now, but um, I'll try and make him bring Newcastle. Up. Him, yeah, the fiasco was down. We'd have potentially got them. Now listen, he's uh, he's been brilliant. Honestly, absolutely brilliant, and never, never patched anything yet. Maybe if they get Champions League, you might, oh, might change his number or something. You, yeah, he's exactly. deleting you. Man. Marvin Bartley, who's that? <laughs> 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 How, how close do you think he was to getting the penalty job or taking the penalty job? I know he was offered it. What, you would do on a percentage? Or yeah, yeah. If I'm just guessing? Guessing. Close. Uh, yeah, very, very, very close. And there was rumours at the time that you'd be part of that staff. Was that, that, was was that rumour just rumours? again, huh? <laughs> I, I don't know, mate. You have to tell me. I'm not spoken to him about that. Do you think he would, uh, he, he did on well at Celtic? He's obviously yeah. Pr proved that. Yeah, yeah. But listen, look what Andrew's done. Yeah. Like, I don't think anyone could have done better than what he done. From what he inherited, to where Celtic car now. It's incredible, mate. Yeah. yeah. I don't think... And by the way, if an Eddie Howard had done it, people would have been talking about him getting a Man United job or, or something like that. Something A massive, massive job that comes up. And that's why people are speaking about Ange in the same way. What he's done is unbelievable. You know, yeah. you can't give the man enough credit because he's inherited a team that was heading in the wrong direction. The recruitment was all over the place. <laughs> and now look at them. You know, got and every and spot on there, don't but he's made it hard for all the rest of us, hasn't he? Because yeah. everyone thinks it's just normal. He got a magic wand, uh -huh. and he's got the fucking magic wand. <laughs> <laughs> what about in terms of like, in the long term? What will Marvin Bartley's team look like? Um, I want to play football in a certain way. I want to be high energy. I want to press. Um, I want to score goals, attack, attack in a certain fashion. But you know, play football the right way. I want. I want to see that. And people always say, "Oh, you, you can't do that." Yes, you can. But you have to do it out there on the training pitch. You can't just go on a Saturday, right? Boys, just go and pass. Exactly, and keep evolving with what you're doing because I already see teams, you know, stopping certain things that we're trying to do. But I always look back on things and with the coaching staff and say, you know, how would you stop us? And we might say, oh, we'd shut that player off or shut that player off. And then we have to come up with different things. So in training on a Friday, we'd be like, right, if that's shut off, this is the next option sure. because they can only shut one thing off, can't they? Yeah, so yeah. If you keep evolving game by game, then they're always a step behind you. If I just say, oh, we're winning games of football, just stick, stick to this way, sooner or later, somebody will be able to stop you and then you'll be out on the pitch and you're stuck. Yeah. So we're always trying to evolve. And as I said, in pre-season, so we'll really players, hammer that. Sorry, so that the players have got like, an idea of any scenario that comes in. Exactly. Well, that's, that's what we do. Uh, yeah, so if I've got the ball and I'm, I should be playing to your feet, for example, and, and then that's shut off, then there'll be two or three other options. And the other two options will realise that size cut off. So now it's time for me to come into the game yeah. and do my bit. But they also realise that if Sai's to get the ball and I'm to run in behind, then that's it. Go to Sai and I'm off. If we're all on the same wavelength, absolutely perfect. And that's something that, you know, does go wrong from time to time. And I always pull boys up from, on it. Like, why have you done that? And give me a reason why, as I said, there always has to be a why. And, and they say, listen, I've just messed up. Hold your hands up. That's fine. That's strike one. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in terms of coaching and training, do you take every in or do you delegate to your no, coaches? No, no, delegate to, to my coaches as well. You know, it's not, not just about me. You know, if you're going to be successful, you need people around you. So as I said, on a Sunday, I'll come up with what we're doing for the week. 
um, you know, whatever it might be for, for the whole thing. So the goalkeepers know when we need them. The boys do an extra fitness, you know, know when they can dip in and out, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then Grantley will come in on Monday, we'll come and we'll put it on the board what we're actually going to do. And then, you know, Grantley will go out and, and set it up and, you know, I'll dip in bits and bobs. But I think it's important for a manager, you don't want to hear my voice every day, yeah. you know. So sometimes I'll, I'll stand there and watch and I'll take nothing and other times I'll step in. If the standard's poor, then, you know, I'll let them know. And normally you've been a player yourself, it rises when that happens. Um, but the tactical stuff, you know, that's probably when I come in and, and I'll do my bit and go out and do his bit. So you just bounce off each other. Uh, <coughs> you were saying uh, Davey designated you to take defenders. Have you went with a similar route where you give a coach a certain area of the pitch or is it more generic? No, it's more, it, yeah, so when we do split, so we always split. Um, twice a week we always split. So that's defenders? And defenders, defensive-minded players, one end and attackers and attackers-minded players. The other. And then so, do you switch them? No, no, no. So, so be, no, I'll always take the defence. Defence. Right. Um, so it'd be in and out of possession stuff. So trying to introduce it slowly at, at this moment in time, as I said, in pre-season, we'll really hammer it home because there's only so much the boys can take on board. So I do a lot of visual stuff. Um, I like to do visual, obviously out there tactical, and then, you know, verbal. Then, then I'll sit them in a the room and we'll speak. Um, but sometimes on the pitch, I'll move them around and say, this is what you need to do. But then training's recorded. So, you know, clip it up and show them this is what you need to do. And also show them them doing it well and doing it badly and the results of them doing it well and doing it badly and you know we've lost goals from doing things that we should be doing better for example against Alawa, we did something and I, and I highlighted it and then we did it against Dunfermline and then we can see the goal from it I said well listen against Alawa, you got away with it but I warned you you know I warned you about this and then Dunfermline punished you for it so hopefully you know we'll learn as a group that you can't you can't take liberties um, you know we have to put the hard yards in otherwise you know you're gonna lose goals and lose games and that clipping training, I, I'd imagine that Queen's were in a clipping training before you came in. No, I don't think they... Were these things that you asked for, like, if I'm yeah. going to come here, this is what needs to happen? No, so I came in, I didn't realise the training wasn't recorded, and I answered the, the board straight away, and, and it was sent up. You know, we've got the video cam, was sent straight up. Um, so it allows me to do that, and I just plug it in after training every day, downloads, clip things up, and I might pull you in, and it might be a specific with you. You know, this is what I've seen, et cetera, et cetera. Um, just be wary of this, this and this. And it takes a lot of time. Don't get me wrong, it takes a lot of time and bigger clubs will have analysts that will help with it. Yeah. Um, but I don't have that at this moment in time, an analyst that works, we have one that works remotely, but in terms of training day-to-day -day stuff, you know, that, that falls upon me and, and I'm more than happy to do it because it's my job. Yeah, um, like you say, no sure. stone on tournament, yeah. Exactly. Uh, a million shame, miles away from when you played non-league. Is it? <laughs> you know, tell me about it, man. <laughs> is, it, <laughs> is there any managers that you had there that you thought, I'll never be like that? Yeah, I've had some of them in the pro game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to name any names, and I'm still looking for jobs. What, what was a, what, what was a certain thing that a manager done when you were a player that you hated? Just shouting without any reason as to why. What? Why are you shouting? Like, what are you? Why are you screaming my name? It felt like I was back at home with my mum. You know, your mum's shouting, yeah. Marvin, Marvin. Yes, mum. And then she'll say nothing because she's downstairs. And she might go downstairs and she'll be like, can you put the kettle on? I'm like, nah. Oh, I've been upstairs. You call me right downstairs to put the kettle on. on. Yourself, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Come on, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So like, a court manager commentating through again. Yeah, just com constantly shouting, constantly saying, do this, do that. Do that and I'm yeah. thinking, I'm out here for a reason. You're there for a reason. You know, and that's why now I, I never played a game from the side. I'll try and help you do things. You know, I'll show you away from it, but the players are out there for a reason. I always say to them, whatever you see as the first decision to make is normally the best decision. Forget about what I'm saying. It's easy from the side. It's like FIFA, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit that 60 yard diag. Oh, yeah. All right, Gaffer, you go and do it. And I'm shelling it everywhere. Come on, man. Curly toe. <laughs> Curly toe. <laughs> uh, other big names you want to, Alan Stubbs, uh, Lenny. Uh, how did you find working under those two? Yeah, both very, very different. Lenny's the best motivator I've worked under. Genuinely. Really, the, mate, huh? The best. Wow. The best, like, I remember going to Edinburgh Derby and he gave a speech that, honestly, man, you could have run for a brick wall. Like, honestly. Was that more to a group, Lenny, in terms of motivator? Or was he good coming individually and motivating? Yeah, more, well? more as a group. group more yeah. as a group, what yeah. Said, like, yeah, team yeah. Talks. yeah, but it's also when you met in his office, you couldn't meet a nicer man, you know, that, that would want to help you with absolutely anything. Yeah. Sometimes you cross the white line for training and you'd be like, Lenny, give me a break, man. <laughs> but, you know... Honestly, one on one, fantastic. You knew it came from a good place, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, you did, you did, you did. I used to ignore him at times, man. Him and Effie, honestly, a story about him and Effie Ambrose just quickly. So we were doing the boxes on a Friday or whatever, and then he used to join in. But he, it was muddy as anything, he had the Astros on, and big Effie, man, gone straight through. 
Smash them. <laughs> Lenny up in the air, comes down, <laughs> lands on the floor. Lenny gets up, Effie's still on the floor because he slid. And he's, Lenny's like that on him. You, you big. <laughs> <laughs> oh, honestly, man, brilliant guy, brilliant time. Right, but, yeah, yeah, Lenny was a, honestly, class, best motivator. Best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had him in the reserves, mate. I thought he was really good as well. Yeah. Uh, I just want to ask you nearly there, mate. Just uh, managing past teammates. So, how would Marvin Bartley deal with Jason Cummins? Send them to Australia. That's three, <laughs> <laughs> That's three strikes in a day. Oh, yeah, he'd have been gone, mate. Honestly. You like catches like that, don't you? You, you f- always feel that, you know, Jason's obviously been absolutely brilliant going across there and stuff. But I would like to have actually worked with him. I think. I'm very different depending on what people, you know, I think I can, you know, be both ways. Don't let people obviously take the mick, but, you know, give them a bit of leeway. And I think maybe at times Jason was misunderstood. Yeah, yeah. That so you, you like characters. I, like, I love that. I love yeah, characters. That's what I said. Be yourself. Yeah. You've got people that are all the same. It's boring. I want characters. I want you to be yourself. Whatever you are, centric, whatever else it might be, come and bring it to bring it to the table. Yeah. You know, yeah. We've got, had a boy in today, Kevin Dabrowski, who had possibly the worst gear on that <laughs> I've ever seen. But... I, I just said embrace, embrace it. it oh, mate. honestly, 100%. embrace it. You came in, came in confident, which is, takes a lot after being beat 5 0 at the weekend and, you, and you're in goal. But you know what I mean? He's he should, he should their own. He's their own big man. Amazing. Uh, summer's coming up. How important, important is recruitment? That is, that is a massive thing for oh. like, getting that right. And, and how are you going to go about that? Are you going to watch games? Are you going to go to games? you got a scouting uh, yeah. team in place? So I've got people helping me in terms of players down in England, uh, kind of at a non league level. and that's probably where we'll recruit from if the players are going to come up the road and, you know, obviously I'll, I'll watch games up here myself. Um, yeah, I said that, mate, that you've got people down there at that it, level. It, that's it? what I mean. And, you know, as soon as the January window closed, obviously the February was open for loans, but I created profiles for positions that I thought we would need. And if players are coming and, and done well, I've, I've crossed those off. So I've got a profile for everything. So I would never, if you're an agent and you say, I've got Marvin Bartley for you and what I'm looking for is a number eight that's going to get on the ball on a half turn. Regardless, I think Marvin Bartley would, would be brilliant for the team or too good for the level, I won't sign him yeah. because he doesn't fit into what I want to do. And that's why it was important for me to create these profiles before, you know, it was crazy season because you start signing players and then so you look, like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You look in July, like I've got all these players. So everyone's got a profile or every position's got a profile of what I need and I'll only recruit that. And, you know, players have to tick those boxes. Otherwise, I won't bring them to the football club. Probably. Uh, for the remainder of this season, what's the aim? Is, you're in the playoffs just when now, Saturday. right? it? When, that's it. Win Saturday. Win as many that, that's, that, that's what happens. That's what I said to the players when I came in. Just win the next game. Yeah. Take care of your, your own business. Because guess what? If you, if you win a game of football, you close a gap on the teams above you. You lose a game of football, you allow them to get further away from you potentially, or the teams beneath you to close a gap. So who cares about all the outside noise and what's going on elsewhere? If you win your game of football, you get the three points, it's banked, no one can take it away from you. Brilliant. Uh, and then for yourself, aims in the long term for management? Um, to manage at the highest level. You know, I've never hidden away from what I want to do. Um, you know, everything's about building blocks. In order for that to happen, I have to be successful here um, and, and do the right thing by, by Queen's. But if I'm talking long term and, and, and the end game, I want to manage at the highest level and I want to win trophies. And I believe I can do it. Some people think he's arrogant and speaking that way. It's not that. It's, it's that I believe in myself. And the day I stop believing in myself, I'll stop, you know, I'll stop being a manager because it means that it's not for me anymore. And when you do get to the top, will you patch up and go on interviews? 100%. <laughs> <laughs> that was what I mean. Cheers, mate. <laughs>